thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm sorry I'm not there because um, there's this strange thing. When I was a child, I discovered a picture of the Zambezi Falls. And they were so marvelous that uh, for all my life, I dreamed to go to Zambia. Um, and when they invited me to, to do this webinar, I said, I can go. And then the virus arrived. And uh, so I'm here in Florence, where I live, and not with you. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I'll come and join you. Um, I'm going to show you something, and I'm going to start from the from the question that gives the title to this webinar. What does Dante tell, tell us that other writers don't? Uh, the, the answer is very easy. Um, that is that Dante answers or asks himself questions uh, mental, still very important for human beings. Questions such as, does God exist? What happens after that? What is the gravest sin? What is the most important virtue? Uh, how should, will the ones who not believe in God go to heaven? Will we? So contemporary novelists, uh, the, the, the novelists we read uh, today, um, do not ask themselves these kind of questions. Uh, these, are, these are the questions of the great religion, like the, the Bible or the, or the Koran. Uh, so now the comedy has something to do uh, with these books, these sacred books. Uh, the comedy talks about these fundamental topics of human life in a wonderful way, in a very poetic way. to start. Um, here we are in the middle of the paradise, the third part of my comedy. And uh, Dante has asked some of the souls he sees around himself, himself uh, he asks if the, the souls will arise after the last judgment. Uh, and the souls have answered yes. The light emanating from their soul will not be too strong for their eyes because they are, will be, the eyes will be made of flesh. You will be emanating, will be giving. It too strong for your eyes. And the answer of the souls is the following. Can you still hear me? Because I don't see any. I don't want to, I hope it, you can, can you see me? Can you hear me? I don't have any, okay. I don't have any, okay, so I'm sorry. There'll be some, um, yes. So the, I'm gonna read it in Italian and you can follow the English translation. It's a, it's a very good translation, but of course language should help to understand how beautiful it is. So, uh, and the, the soul's answer, ma si come carbon che fiamma rende per vivo candor quella soverchia, si che la sua parvenza si difende, vinto in apparenza dalla carne che tutto di la terra ricoperchia. Ne potrà tanta luce affaticarne che gli organi del corpo saranno forti a tutto ciò che potrà dilettarne. Tanto mi parver subito e accorti e l'uno e l'altro coro a dicer amme che ben mostrar disio dei corpi morti. Forse non pur per loro, ma per le mamme, per i padri e per gli altri fu che fuor cari, anzi che fosser sempiterne fiamme. So the answer is no problem. There will be no problem. The light will not will not make give problems, cause problems to arise. And the other souls answer quickly, Amen, Amen, uh, expressing the joy uh, 
with which they, they, they received the news that the eyes and the soul will match perfectly together. So a scene like this is unimaginable in a modern writer, in a contemporary writer. It would be bad taste, it would be kitsch. But what Dante says is, is very important. It continues to be, to be true. It continues to be important for, for us after seven centuries from his death. We don't want to see the soul. Um, we want to see the, the flesh, the bodies of the people who are dead. And Dante takes this dogma, this truth of faith, and turns it into poetry in some of the most beautiful lines of Italian literature. Uh, Tanto mi parve subito accorti, e l'uno e l'altro cora dice ramme, che ben mostrati di dei copi morti. They were so quick in saying amen, they, will, they, 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 they showed the, the, the desire they had of their body, their body that body. Not, maybe not for them, but for the mother and the father who were dead before, and they who wanted to see them in bones and flesh. So just to give you an idea of what what sound is the sound of the of Dante's poem. Um, I'm going to give you just some news, some uh, just a, a, an idea about Dante's life. Um, Dante was born in in Florence. Uh, in 1265, as you said, um, this is the Florence that Dante didn't see, because you know the, the, the dome. Maybe some of you know Florence or, or pictures of because somebody maybe was here in the past. Um, Dante didn't see it because he, he lived one century before, uh, more than one century before the, the construction of the dome. Um, but this is the idea of Florence everybody has, and. Uh, this is the palace of government in Florence, Palazzo della Signoria. Uh, it was, it was un, on construction. They were building it when Dante was young, but Dante didn't see the old building. What was, the, what was like the Florence Dante uh, saw when he was young in Florence? Uh, well, uh, for sure, uh, he could see a, a church uh, that is still uh, here in Florence, the Badia Fiorentina, here it is, the tower, and this palace called Bargello, that is the, the oldest prison in town. Uh, in the past, the prisons were not in the outskirts, were in the center of the town, and the Bargello was one of the prisons. These two buildings were there when Dante was young. And, and of course, uh, it was there too, the famous baptistry, the baptistry in which Dante was baptized in 1265. Um, and it's in the center of the town, not far from the station, uh, maybe 300 meters from the station, it's still there, still beautiful, and Dante uh, mm, saw it when he was, when he was young. And uh, the quarter of the town in which Dante uh, was born was called, and is still called, uh, San Piero Maggiore, St. Peter uh, the Major. And this is a, not a picture, a, a drawing uh, of the late 17th, six, uh, 18th century. We don't have any pictures of the, of the, of the quarter of town when Dante was born uh, coming from the Middle Ages. This is a kind of a modern image. And this is an image of the same quarter, the same area of Florence I took yesterday because I live in that area. I live just nearby. So this is the square, uh, maybe not where Dante uh, was born, but very close to the place where Dante was born. Nobody knows exactly where, where he was born, but in this area of Florence, the center of Florence, not far from, from the river, not far from the river. And, uh, and this, this one is the oldest image we have of Florence. It's a fresco, is a detail of a fresco um, here in Florence um, of the middle 14th century called the Madonna of Mercy. And this is a representation of Florence in the mid 14th century. And the only thing that maybe you can, you can recognize is the baptistry uh, in, the, in the center of the image. But of course the town is very different from the town 
uh, of today. Uh, Florence now is, is very different from, from, from I mean, in, in comparison with what you see now. And what you see now is walls around the town and towers and towers. And uh, you can see them here too. Uh, I, 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 the title is An Image of a Typical Tuscan Comune. Um, and this is a Tuscan Comune today, San Gimignano, if you're not Tuscan, maybe there are some villages very well conserved, still having the towers uh, they, they used to have in the Middle Ages. And Florence in the Middle Ages was more or less like this, the walls uh, around the town and the towers. Why so? The walls, because it was a very dangerous world. Uh, there were enemies. Uh, Italians were uh, very contentious people, so there were struggles, wars, and it was better to close the door of the town at night. So there were walls and, and doors, and nobody was allowed to go out or to go to come in during the night. Um, and towers, because towers um, were kind of the symbol of power. The, the higher the tower, the most powerful the family were. Um, and when the government of the city changed, uh, it could happen that the tower was demolished or cut. In Italian, we have this word scapitozzata. They took the, 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 the building and took over the, the, the top of the building. And that's why in many Italian towns, there are towers without the top. San Gimignano is still very close to the image of, of the Middle Ages. Florence changed a lot. Many towers were destroyed and damaged uh, during the centuries. Okay, this is the set of the life of Dante. Um, and here I give you just some quick um, data about his life. Um, he was born in, in 1265 in the quarter of San Martino in Florence. And uh, I, I just lived there. I could open my window now and, and show you the, the quarter. Maybe I can do that afterwards. Um, he belonged to the, to the upper middle class. It means that he could live without working because there were, because he had some income coming from some land he rented or, or uh, sold to other people. So he could just, you know, uh, spend his life studying and writing. Um, in his works, uh, a funny thing is he never talks about the, his mother or his father or, or wife or four children, uh, but he constantly talks about a girl uh, he met when he was nine years old and with whom he fell in love. The name of, the, of the, this young lady is Beatrice, Beatrice, the girl who gives beatitude, who gives happiness. This is the meaning of the, of the, of the name of Beatrice. Um, when, he, when she grew up, Beatrice married another man, not Dante, uh, but Dante continued to love her after her death in 1290. So Beatrice married another man, she died, but Dante kept loving her after her death. And in fact, most of the works of Dante are devoted, are dedicated to, to Beatrice or the ghost of Beatrice. Um, he, Dante married this Gemma Donati, belonging to a very important family in Florence, in the early 90s. We don't know, we know very little about her, but just because Dante doesn't talk, any, uh, doesn't talk about her. Um, you know, it was a society in which uh, marriage uh, didn't come from love. It was a kind of a match between two families. So the father and mother decided who you are, go you are going to, to marry. Uh, and it was possible to, 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 be, to be in love with somebody else, but marry somebody else uh, you didn't love. I mean, it happens also today, but less than, than in the past. Um, in the last years of 13th century, when he's about 30 years, 30 years old, years old uh, Dante entered political life. Uh, he soon became active in several governing councils and championed the causes of the White Party. There were two parties in two factions, two factions in, in, in Florence, the Whites and the, the Blacks. And um, Dante stand with the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the Whites. In June 13, when Dante was 35, 
um, Dante received his highest honor and he was elected to serve as one of the six priors of the Comune. It was like being a minister of Florence. Florence was a quite big town for the, for the period. It was about 100,000 inhabitants. Uh, keep in mind that Paris in France had 150,000 uh, inhabitants and Rome was maybe a little more little than Florence. So 100,000 inhabitants was, was a big town, was a big town. Um, and being one of the six priors was, was very important. Um, meanwhile, the tensions between the, the two parties, the whites and the blacks, had erupted in, into violence. Um, at the end of June, 1300, um, the six priors, among them Dante, banished 15 members of the two parties, the two factions. They, they used to, deal, to do like this. Uh, they didn't put pe people in prison. They just sent them away. Uh, they, they, they forced them to go out of Florence, uh, out of the wall of the town. And so they were forced not to come back in town for, for months or years or forever. Um, a, few min a few months later, uh, later, the city allowed most of the exiled whites to return to Florence. The blacks sought revenge against the whites and, and they called uh, on Pope Boniface uh, for help. The Pope was the most important political figure in Italy at the time, was very powerful. He had uh, an army, uh, it was rich, so it was very dangerous to be his enemies. Being the enemies of the Pope could be very dangerous, more than today. Today is not that dangerous, can be dangerous, but in, in the Middle Ages, it was very dangerous because the Pope was also a political figure with an army, with, with money and with, with the power and the strength uh, to be obeyed. Um, the pontiff sent one of his men, the Prince of Valois uh, and his troops to, to settle the issue. And, uh, and in and the beginning of 1301, when Dante was 36, um, this Prince Charles seized Florence and, and handed over the power to the blacks. At the time, Dante was out of Florence, was in Rome in a, during an embassy in Rome, and he could not come back to Florence. He was exiled from Florence. In, in January 32, 1302, when he was 37, he was sentenced two years of exile from Florence. And in March, a new decree was issued and Dante was forever forbidden to return to the city. So Dante never saw Florence again. So his life is basically cut in two. Until uh, 1301, he is a young, quite rich, important Florentine man. After 1301, he's, he's a nobody. He has to go out of Florence. He's on his own. He doesn't have any money and he has to go to exile. And uh, the exile lasts 20 years. Uh, the first part, he he spent the first part of, of the exiles in Tuscany, in Emilia, in Veneto, that is the central northern Italy. And, uh, and then the second part of his exile is, is between Verona, northern Italy, not far from Venice, and Ravenna, where he dies in 1321. Uh, there was a, the video that opened this meeting, uh, there was a tomb, the, the, the grave of Dante in Ravenna, big monument in Ravenna. This is the life of Dante. So uh, cut in two from, by, by, the, by the exile, the condemnation to exile in, when he was 35. Uh, so he has to leave the family, the sons, wife, uh, and everything. And he has to, to, to gain his own life, uh, writing letters from, for, for powerful people, um, being the so-called court poet, poet, I mean, he has to, 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 to try to, to make money out of his, of, of his art and intellect. And during, during these 20 years of exile, he writes many works. There are the works of, I mean, the, the books he writes, and these are the books that every student in Italy has to read. Uh, I'm sure the ambassador had to, had to, 
to do this in school when he was younger. Um, there's the Vita Nova, this is the story of his love for Beatrice, uh, the lyric poems, the De Vulgari Eloquencia in Latin, because Dante used to write both in Latin and Italian. The Vulgari Eloquencia is the first treatise on Italian language. The Convivio is the first treatise in Italian, in the vernacular, not in Latin, but in Italian, uh, talking about philosophy. The De Monarchia, one of the first treatises on politics. And then finally, the Divine Comedy. Uh, the first what? What, what, what is it, the, the, the Divine Comedy? It's not really a, an epic poem, as I heard before, because the epic poem is more um, Homer or Virgil. You know, the, the, the hero that conquered something, conquered something and, and saved the lady and, and so on. This is something different, different. The Divine Comedy is, somebody says, a philosophical Christian vision of mankind's eternal fate or a symbolic dream, or simply a journey to the afterlife, or what's the divine comedy? Um, I'm gonna give you just some data about what it is, divine comedy, and then I'm gonna show you some image. Um, well, the, the divine comedy is very simple to, to, to tell the story of the comedy because the, the, the beginning of the poem is dramatic. Dante. Dante got lost in a dark forest. This is the beginning of the, of the text, of the book. He's alone, he's afraid, he does not know what to do. And the comedy is the story of the journey that, the travel, that starting from this forest, Dante makes to the three otherworldly kingdom realms, hell, purgatory, and heaven, paradise. The poet imagines that his journey took place in the year uh, 1300, uh, the year in which the first jubilee in the Catholic Church was announced. Uh, at that date, Dante was 35 years old, and therefore, uh, as, as the first verse of the poem says, he was in the middle of the journey of his life. This is the, the starting, the beginning of the Divine Comedy, Every Italian knows these lines by heart. Italians know maybe only these. Uh, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't read so much Dante. They have other things to do. But these lines are more or less, I would say, the most famous lines in Italian literature. So I'm going to read them in Italian, and you can follow in English. Uh, and I can read them by heart. I can, I can tell them by heart because uh, I went to school too. So they, they forced me to learn them by heart. Nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita, mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta via era smarrita. Ai, quanto a dire qual era e cosa dura, è sta selva selvaggia e aspra e forte che nel pensiero rinnova la paura. Tante amara che poco più morte, ma per trattar del ben chi vi trovai, dirò delle altre cose che vi ascolto. The journey begins on Good Friday, in the year 13, uh, 1300, and lasts a, a week. Between Friday night and Saturday, Dante and Virgil, the first guide he has in the, in, the, in, the, in the comedy, in the commedia, go through hell. On Sunday, they arrive at the base of the, mind, of the mountain of purgatory, and they, in, and they take four days to climb the mountain. The last day is occupied by the ascent into the skies of paradise. So one week. Um, every chapter, every part, one, every, every, there are three parts, three cantiche, we say in, in Italian. Every part of the comedy is divided into in cantos, 33 or 34 cantos, and every canto is made by a number of between 115, 160 uh, verses, lines. So the total number of verses is 14,000 uh, 223. It's a big book. It's a big book. Although it can stay in, in, a, in a little book because it's printed very, very little here. This is my personal copy without commentary that I take with myself when I go abroad. And it's very light. And, uh, but the, 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 the book with a commentary is big. This is, this is just I mean, the third part of the comedy. There are three volumes like this. This is the inferno. So it's a big book. And it took 20 years to, to, to write for Dante. Um, 
uh, in his journey, Dante is not alone. There are two guides guiding him, helping him to, to go through the, 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 the afterlife. The first one is Virgil, the most important Latin poet, the author of the Aeneas, uh, a poem Dante knew by heart very, very well. And Virgil is the one who takes Dante to hell and purgatory. And then in the paradise, Dante meets Beatrice, and Beatrice is the one who takes him to the heavens, to the skies. Virgil is not allowed to do that because he's not a Christian. Beatrice is a Christian, and so they can go together to see God in the end. Um, the two guides have, so they have different uh, function and different authorities. Um, it is Beatrice who asked Virgil to save his lover, his former lover, Dante, uh, because Dante was in a sinful condition. Um, when Dante and Beatrice meet again uh, on the summit of purgatory, Beatrice will clarify that the painful passage through the hell and purgatory was necessary for Dante to repent and to be saved. Uh, at the end of purgatory, Dante and Beatrice meet and, and Beatrice tell, explains to Dante why he had to go through hell and purgatory to, to purify himself, to, 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 to become clean. And she says, tanto giù cadde che tutti argomenti alla salute sua erano già corti, fuor che mostrarli le, perduti, le perdute genti. He fell so far, he, he, was in a sinful, he was full of sins. So he, he was forced to see the dead people in, in hell to understand what he risked. Per questo visitai l'uscio di morti e a colui che l'acqua su condotto mi preghi miei piangendo furon porti. That's why I visited the, 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 the kingdom of dead and asked Virgil to, to help him to come out the situation in which he was. Um, so he fell so far. Uh, he was in a, such a condition, he had to go to hell and purgatory. Um, from statements like this, one understands that the comedy is not only a journey to the afterlife, it's also a kind of a path of purification that Dante makes uh, from loss in the forest, uh, which is an obvious symbol of sin, of, of moral corruption, to repentance and uh, spiritual rebirth. So this is the plot of the Divine Comedy. You don't need to know anything more. This is what happens. Three cantiche, three chapters, uh, 100 cantos as a whole, uh, a journey through hell, purgatory, and heaven, paradise. Two guys, Virgil, Beatrice, nothing more. Um, it could be boring because, you know, it can be boring. Um, but Dante has a wonderful idea, he was a genius. So the idea was to put in, in this journey, a series of characters, a series of people, Dante meets, he has enc encounters and has a dialogue with them. So the, the Divine Comedy is not beautiful because of what I just said, the, the, the journey, but because it's full of people, it's full of strange people in hell, people who suffers in, in the fires of hell or people who can see the, fa the face of God, the saints, the, the, the beatitude of, of, of the saints. So it's a very various, it's a very um, also funny and, and, and entertaining text, just because it's full of people. Um, moreover, um, the, in, in the Middle Ages, uh, most of the manuscript of the Divine, of the Divine Comedy uh, had images. On them. So the, the reader could read the text and also have a look of the pictures uh, that uh, painters um, made on the, on, the, on, the, on the manuscripts they, 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 they could read. Uh, I'm going to show you some of these images because it's very interesting to have the experience of a medieval reader. Um, one second, because I have to change uh, screen. And I guess you can see it. Uh, this is Botticelli image of the Inferno. You see it, right? You can, I guess, yeah. Um, this is the image of the Inferno. Uh, 
it starts from the from the uh, from the earth here the top of the page and it goes down and down and down and down and here there's satan the top the, 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 the bottom of the inferno there's the, the, the devil satan um and here i mean below uh, satan there's a passage going to the purgatory to the mountain of the purgatory um well okay this is this is the, the, one of the most famous images of Dante made in the 19th century by a painter called Gustave Doré. But in the Middle Ages, if you take a, a manuscript uh, uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, in 13th century or 14th century, you can have images like this. Okay, so you have the text here. You can read with me. Qui comincia il capitolo terzo. Here starts the chapter. Three, hmm? and then he says, Per me si va nella città dolente. Through me, you go in the painful town. Can you see it? And then there's this wonderful image made by uh, uh, the, 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 the guy who did the, the manuscript. And here, here's the, de the devil with the, the boat. And here are Dante and Virgil, Dante in blue. And Virgil in red, Virgil is the one who speaks with the devil. And then they pass the river, there's a river with a boat, they pass the river and they enter the town of, uh, of the hell. As you can see, um, the town of hell is imaged just like Florence, it's just like a, a medieval town with the walls and the door. And, and but, but inside there are flames, fires. Can you see it? I guess so. Um, so the medieval reader had the experience of reading the text here, but also having a kind of a, how do you say, um, visual experience. And that's uh, funny and that's nice. Now, uh, in general, images were little, they were put in the capital letters at the beginning of the cantos. Capitolo primo. The inferno, first chapter of the hell of the inferno, and here there's an image. But sometimes images were bigger. This is the tenth canto of the inferno, and here uh, always Dante in blue and and Virgil in red, with the tombs of the death rising from the tombs, and so and so. Here there are Virgil and Dante uh, talking to some people in hell and these people are disguised as flames on fire um, here's the 26th canto of the inferno in which there's a there's a wreckage of the, of the, of the, of the boat of Ulysses and so on this is the a very famous canto every italian will know it is conte ugolino these are always dante in blue and virgil talking to somebody in hell, and this guy is eating the brain of one of the, of the damned here in the, infer in the inferno. And, uh, and, 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 and the, the painter tells the story to the images. There are three moments in the story here. One, second, third, and so on. Just, I, I, just wanna, I, I just wanted to give you just the idea of a visual experience of the comedy. There's a dialogue with the Minotauro, half man, half bull. There's a dialogue with the Centauro, half horse, half man, and so on. So on, so on, so on. Okay. So it was not only a, a, a cultural experience, but also a visual experience. That's why it was, it was nice to, to see it. And I'm going to give you just one more example of what was the kind of reading people uh, used to make of this of this text. I'm going to show you the image of three um, manuscripts um, of the Divine Comedy. Just one minute. Okay. Uh -huh.
So this is the mean image of, of, the, of, a, of a medieval manuscript of the comedy. Um, that's the kind of book medieval readers used to have in their hands. So you can see here, I'm gonna read it for you. Per me si va nella città dolente, per me si va nell'eterno dolore, si va tra la perduta gente. And you can see close to the text notes. It means that the reader used to make some notes to, to explain the text to, to somebody, maybe to himself. Okay. Uh, okay. I can't go back to my PowerPoint image. So I just chose now uh, three uh, examples from the Divine Comedy just to show you um, why it is so beautiful for an Italian reader. So I took three examples, one from Inferno, the second from the, the Purgatory and the, th the third from Paradise. They are very famous for the Italian reader and I, I guess they could be interesting for you too. This is the, the place in which, in which the, the moment in which Dante and Virgil enters, enter the, 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 the gate, the door of the inferno, and they see um, something written on the top of the door. It's a kind of a message that the inferno itself gives sense to the reader. So they enter the, the, the door and they see this these lines of writing. Uh, I guess you can see them in English, you can, can you? Per me si va nella città dolente, per me si va nel dolore, per me si va tra la perduta gente. Giustizia mosse il mio alto fattore, fecemi la divina potestate, la somma sapienza e il primo amore. Dinanzi a me non fuor cose create, Se non eterne, io eterna duro. Lasciate ogni speranza voi che entrate. Queste parole di colore oscuro vi dio scritte al sommo d'una porta, per chi io, maestro, il senso l'orme duro. So Dante and Virgil enters the door, Dante sees these lines of writing, and they say what I just read. This is the, 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 the gate of the hell. Uh, Abandon every hope who enter here. So Dante is scared. He doesn't want to go, to go in, uh, but then and, and then he he asks Virgil, "What does it mean? What what what's the the, the danger they are going to to face in their journey?" Uh, and Virgil has the function of of helping him and finding courage for for, for him. Um, so the, the inferno is by far the most the, the most dramatic, the most tragic uh, uh, cantica of the of the comedy. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful idea to, to put this kind of script uh, atop of the door of the inferno. Uh, also because in the doors, the top of the doors of the medieval towns, there were uh, writings like this. So Dante is kind of a, uh, transforming the, the, the city of hell, the, the hell itself in a, in a medieval town, putting a, a door, walls around the town and something written on it to scare the enemies, in this case, Dante and Virgil. Um, that's why the Inferno is the most uh, beloved of the three canticas, because it's more, it's funnier, it's more violent, and it's full of fire and suffering, and everybody wants to see somebody else suffer or, or having troubles. So it's the, when, I, when in school or in a university is the is the most read of the three cantica. Um, the purgatory instead. What what is the purgatory? The purgatory is the kingdom in between. Uh, the people in the purgatory, the, the dead people you you find you find you find in the in purgatory, um, are not good or bad. They are waiting to go to heaven. They will go to heaven one day, but they have to suffer for the sins they committed uh, during life. So they spend a long period of time, centuries, in, in purgatory, um, suffering for their sins. So it's a temporary kingdom. It will, it will end after the final, the final judgment. Um, and that's, that's interesting because they're, they're suffering, but there's also tenderness. 
uh, it's not like the, the hell in which there's only suffering and fire and, 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 and cry and so on. The purgatory is a mix of bad things and good things. And these are very famous lines for an Italian reader. And it's the end of Purgatory Five. I told you that one of the, the beautiful things of the comedy is that Dante meets a lot of people. And um, most of the people are famous people, kings, popes, emperors, but some of the people are, are just nobody. Are people Dante used to know when he was in Florence, when he was young. And they are very touching, these kind of moments in which, these moments in which he, he, he meets somebody he knew in real life. And these seven, seven lines I'm going to read you, I'm going to read to you, are very touching because uh, Dante talks about a lady called Pia, Pia, but the, we, don't, we don't know anything about her uh, except that she was killed by her, her husband just after the, the wedding. And we don't know anything more, but the, the lines of, of, of Pia, who introduces herself, are very touching. I'm going to read it to you in Italian. Um, e quando tu sarai tornato al mondo e riposato da lunga via, seguitò il terzo spirito al secondo, ricorditi di me che sono la Pia. Siena mi fe, disfece di Maremma, salsi colui che in anellata Pria disposando Mavea con la sua gemma. So Pia meets Dante going through the purgatory he stops him, she stops him, she stops him, and asks to, to pray for her when, when he will go back to the world. So when we, you will, will, will go back to the world, take a rest, and then pray for me, remember me and pray for me, I'm the one who was unmade by Maremma, I was killed in Maremma, Maremma is a region, is a part of Tuscany, and, and the guilty one is the one who gave, gave me the ring, the, the ring of, of the wedding, so the husband of Pia. We don't know anything more about this lady, um, or maybe just a little more. The, 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 the last name of the family was Pia dei Tolomei. And this, the silence surrounding this figure is, is very touching, it's very, it's very tender and strange. And that's why one of the, the most famous scene, scenes of the, of the purgatory, the meeting with, the encounter with Pia dei Tolomei. And the canto stops there, and it changes completely uh, the set. Uh, Pia, the last word of Pia are, are disposando mavea con la sua gemma. The third and last of the of the uh, pieces of, of, of the Divine Comedy uh, I'm going to read to you is uh, maybe my favorite one. So maybe the, maybe the, the most beautiful part of the of the Divine Comedy. Uh, we are now in paradise, in paradise, in heaven. And so Dante and Beatrice are uh, going through the skies of heaven. They are going up from, from, the, from, from earth to, to the sun, to the moon, to the, the planets, and then to God in the end. And Dante is turning around the, the earth. At the time, people thought that earth was at the center of the universe and not the sun. So the earth is, is it's at the center of the universe. And, uh, and Dante and Beatrice are turning around the earth and all the planets. And so Dante sees, watches the whole universe from above. Uh, it's it's un unbelievable that somebody in the Middle Ages could imagine himself turning around the universe, but he could. And, uh, and he tells us what he sees from above. He says, um, I'm going to read it. It's a very long, it's a long piece, so I'm going to read it in, in Italian and you can follow in English. Col viso, my eyes, ritornai per tutte quante le sette spere e vidi questo globo tal ch'io sorrisi del suo vil sembiante. You can see the, the earth and his smiles, uh, because it, earth is, is very little. E quel consiglio per migliore approbo che l'ha per meno e chi ad altro pensa Chiamarsi puote veramente probo. It's, Earth is so little that it, it doesn't, that there's no meaning in struggling for, for, for the power and, 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 and money and everything else. It's just too little. So we, don't, we should not think about the Earth. 
vidi la figlia di Latona incensa senza quell'ombra che mi fu cagione perché già la cadetti rara e densa. He sees the, the moon. L'aspetto del tuo nato, Iperione, qui vi sostenni e vidi come si muove circa e vicino a lui Maia e Dione. He sees the sun, Mars and Venus. Quindi mi appare del temperar di Giove tra il padre e il figlio, e quindi mi fu chiaro il variar che fanno di loro dove. E tutti e sette mi si dimostraro quanto sono grandi e quanto sono veloci e come sono in distante riparo. L'aiuola che ci, ci fa tanto feroci, volgendo mio con gli eterni gemelli, tutta m'apparve da colli alle foci. Poi ci rivolsi gli occhi agli occhi belli. So the, the lines I would quote forever are the little threshing floor that so incites our savage was all from hills to river mouths revealed to me while I willed with eternal Gemini. My eyes then turn again to the far eyes, the fair eyes of Beatrice who was with him in paradise. Um, this may be one of the most beautiful part of the comedy. Dante sees the universe from above and understands how little it is and how unimportant it is in comparison with the, 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 the soul, the death and other things that are not material or human. Um, we have read the first part of the, comedy, the beginning of the comedy. I'm going to close, to, to finish, with the end of the comedy. Because in the end, Dante and Beatrice, uh, and Dante, in fact, has a chance to see, to watch God himself. And the last lines of the comedy um, are these ones. I'm going to read them in Italian. These are as, as famous as the first lines of the comedy, and they are very beautiful because Dante is telling us that he finally was able to see God. Se non che la mia mente fu percossa da un fulgore in che sua voglia venne, all'alta fantasia cui mancò possa, mangiavo il geva il mio disio e il velle, siccome rota ugualmente è mossa, l'amor che muove il sole e l'altre stelle. Here forced failed my high fantasy, but my desire and will were moved already like a wheel revolving uniformly by the love God that, mo that moves the sun and the other stars. And that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Claudio okay. Giuta, for such a wonderful presentation there. I don't know if there are any within the audience here or those of us uh, connected online. I would like to ask any questions with regards to the presentation. Please, we can uh, give you some few moments to ask the questions to the professor. Professor, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you said, uh, all Italians study Dante at high school. Closer. Uh, all Italians uh, study Dante at high school. Uh, we learn to love Dante. At the beginning, it's usually difficult because, of course, it's uh, very complicated and very elaborated, but uh, then uh, we all fall in love uh, with uh, his uh, poetry. I would, uh, first of all, thank you very much for your insights and presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you, because you talked about uh, his life uh, uh, and uh, it was a very troubled life of Dante. He had to leave his country for political reasons. Uh, mm, and I think uh, it could be interesting for our guests to uh, understand uh, uh, a little bit more about the context and the, the human uh, I would say difficult experience that uh, Dante had uh, in his life. So, uh, why, why all that happened? Uh, uh, what was, uh, as far as we can understand, the reason of this uh, political struggle at that time? Uh, what were the dynamics that? Uh, uh, maybe it is hard for us to understand, but uh, uh, 
uh, obliged him to, to go out of, of Florence and how he could survive because for, I come from Verona, so as you mentioned, as a, uh, he was hosted there. So uh, if I may ask you to give us uh, your opinion about his uh, human experience as well. Thank you. So, um, yes, um, every, every Italian student is forced, is obliged to study Dante. And in the end, it can be also a kind of a um, tragic experience for students because art Dante is difficult for, for, for Italians themselves. Um, so you, first of all, you have to understand um, something about the political situation of Italy at that period. There were two big forces, political forces in Europe. There was the emperor of Germany um, who had also power on center and northern Italy. And there was the Pope in Rome who was a political superpower, we would say. Uh, in center and northern Italy, there was a, a series of little and large comuni, little town uh, between 1,000 uh, inhabitants or 100,000 inhabitants that, uh, that were free. They, were, um, they had governments on, on their own. So there was this continual struggle against the emperor from one side and the pope from the other side. So the, the life of the comuni in, in, in center and northern Italy was always a very dangerous and precarious life. And it was a very violent society. Killing uh, or exiling was not uh, unusual. Everybody in his family had people who were killed or exiled uh, for political reasons. And in fact, Florence in particular during the second part of the 13th century um, was, a, 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 we say a town split in two parts. There was the faction, the party of the Guelfi who sided the, 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 the Pope and the Ghibellini who sided with the Emperor. And there among the, the Guelfi, there was the part called Bianchi, whites, and the part called Blacks, Neri. And every, every time there was a kind of a struggle in, the, in town, uh, the solution was not putting your enemies in jail, was sending your enemies abroad, out of the walls of the town. And out of the walls of the town, um, the world that opens out of the walls of the town was a very dangerous world because you were a nobody. Everybody could kill you and there was no judge to, to, to defend you. So Dante found himself in 1301 out of Florence without the wife, without the sons, with no money, uh, and with no rights on his own stuff, and he could not come back. He was helped by some of the people of his party, the whites, for a short period, we think about a couple of years. Then he had to survive with his own uh, forces, with his own talent. Uh, he had to, to, to work for the first time in his life. He was 35, 30, 36. And he was, of course, a very important intellectual. He was a poet. He was somebody who, who could write letters in Latin, who could speak perfectly, and it was not common at the time. So we don't know so much about how he uh, survived in the, in, the, in the last 20 years of his life, but it changed uh, very, very frequently, very often, the place in which he lived, from the, the coast of Tuscany to the center of Tuscany, to, to Bologna, to Ravenna, to Verona, to Lucca, and so on, so on, so on. And in every one of these towns, there was a government or there was a prince. And what he used to do for these princes, for these people, for these powerful people was basically writing letters. Uh, it was a secretary, it was a, a clerk, somebody who could write good, well-shaped letters in Latin. And he gained his, he, 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 he made a living out of that. Not because he was a poet, but because, because he knew Latin and he was a, a, a good speaker. So he was used by these families to, uh, to be a kind of a grand commis, they say in French, some, some very high level um, employee or, or, or clerk. Uh, but it was a very uh, tough life. And in fact, in the Convivio and in Divine Comedy, he complains often 
about the fact that he was forced to, to in the comedy, as the ambassador remembers, he says, sai come, sa, come duro calle lo scendere e salire dall'altro scale, how it's hard to walk down and walk up the stairs belonging to other families. He was paid for writing letters and maybe for making poems. Uh, we don't know so much about that. But it was a very tough life. And what it was a, a very dangerous life. We don't have to, to, to forget that Dante was also a soldier. In 1289, he, he participated to a very important struggle close to Florence, Campaldino, and he saw people dying and maybe he killed people. So it was a very violent world, very violent, much more violent than today. It was a difficult world and you had to struggle to survive. Um, moreover, there were these two very powerful uh, people, the emperor, emperor and the pope, who had a strong power on, on central and northern Italy. And Dante had a relationship with, between, I mean, with, with the two of them, both with the, the pope and with, with the emperor, Eric VII. Um, that's it, more or less. I guess I leave you to your cocktail and I hope I'll, I'll see you there one day. Thank you, Professor. We appreciate so much for those insightful questions as well as those answers that you provided. All right, we're going to have now a short break and then our visitors here will be entertained to a short cocktail. You come back and uh, listen to some interesting classic music. And I hope our invited guests are going to look forward to this yet inspiring uh, program that remains for us. So now we're going to have a short break. 